those crystals. It's huge. Welcome to a random area of my childhood bedroom. I'm going to tell you how to be a pageant queen. Now, I am an amateur. But, I've been doing pageants, I'm retired. But I have been doing pageants since, like, 2010 or so. So, yes. I, I did pageants for 9 to 10 years-ish. So, I even gave a whole presentation in one of my classes about pageants. And I got an A plus on that. So, we're going to talk about how to be a pageant queen. There are multiple types of pageant queens. There is not just one pageant queen. A lot of people, there's stereotypes for every kind of person, right? So, a lot of people think that pageant queens are this image, right? But you can be a pageant queen. Don't let them fool you. You may have to work harder than other people. You may have to get training, but you can be a pageant queen. It's part strategy, but also a little part luck because sometimes the judges just aren't feeling you. It's like a job interview. It's literally pageants are just job interviews on stage and with an actual interview to me. But some pageants don't have interviews. Have I been to a pageant that didn't have an interview? <laughs> pageants have different elements. Usually the primary elements of a pageant are interview, on stage introduction, formal wear. Some pageants mix it up and have talent as a part of the main pageant and then also pageants have optionals. I'm going to talk about the four main elements. Introduction, talent, dress, or evening gown, and interview. <laughs> introduction because that's usually the first part of the competition. I would say for onstage introduction, usually keep it around 20 seconds. Sometimes they give you a 30 second time limit. Always check the rules. Read the manual, quote unquote, before you use the product, before you do anything. Look at the instructions, read the directions. You got a video game, look at the controls. Simple basics. So find out what the guidelines and rules are for each competition, first of all. For personal introduction, this is what I have to tell you. You can go for the classic, if you look up personal introductions, you can go for the classic quote or phrase, then maybe another sentence about how that relates to you, and then my name is Dory Not a Fish. Swim. You can also be more unique and zhuzh it up as they say. I've had plenty of personal introductions. I don't remember most of them, but I can give you an example on the fly. So here we go. If I was to give a personal introduction at this very moment, it would be something like this. Sunflowers are bright as the day. And I like to brighten up people's worlds. And I like to brighten up people's day. Maybe that's why sunflowers are my favorite flower. My name? Boy introduction. You can also say, it's because this is the idea that you want the judges to remember. You want them to remember who you are. That is why you put your name last. So you can put your name in the beginning or the middle, or you can put your name first and then remind them again. But I say, it's a good idea to put your name last. But I say, try not to be too generic, try to have some spice. I sang in one of my personal introductions. Um, you can steal it if you want. <laughs> Go ahead. I did. I stood up there and I said, Hello, it's me. 
Dorian. <laughs> so that's the premise for personal introduction is find something about yourself that is not going to be something that would probably come up in an interview or a fun fact. Try not to repeat information. Okay, if when you're studying interview questions, which you will probably do in your prep, if you're gonna prep, if you're watching this video, I'm assuming you're prepping. So if you are watching, if you are interviewing, if you are reading interviewing interview questions, I'm assuming that you're gonna have an idea of what they might ask you. Try not to put something that is something you practiced in interview into your personal introduction because you want them to have new information. You don't want it to be repetitive. You don't want them to sit and interview and be like, yes, I already know this. You want them to be like on their toes the whole time and be like, how can we learn about this girl even more? So because I sprinkle in some interview stuff in there, I'm just going to wrap up interview tips. Just practice questions, practice talking in front of a camera, for example, and then you can see what you might do subconsciously. Subconsciously, I do like I have this face when I pause sometimes, and I've noticed it. I have like this pausing face that looks like I like died inside, and then I like come back alive. So for me, I have to learn to be, well, I had to learn to be more engaged and more present so I wouldn't make that face. But it's still, that's part of who I am as a person, so I will always probably make that face in some scenarios. But while I'm doing pageant things, I'm conscious of it. Like sometimes you make that face. Something else that I do is like when I'm patient and I'm like sitting down waiting, I like, I go like this, like, oh. I notice that I do that, so that's something that I am conscious of because also if you have an open interview where they can see you waiting, you don't want them to like see, the, see you in the corner of their eye, like, like tapping yourself or, you know, that's just a thing, you know. We all have our little tic tacs. With your, I was gonna, I was looking for a chair. <laughs> Usually, you should sit down with your knees together. These are your knees. Your knees together. These are your legs. <laughs> These are your legs, and then your ankles crossed, and then to whichever side is comfortable. That's a good way to sit, and your posture will be good if you're sitting that way. It might be a little bit uncomfortable at first, but you'll get accustomed to it. So I was just thinking about how sometimes pageants will have like orientation or like something where they tell you that. Because I learned that in a pageant, I didn't. They told me to sit like that. And I was like, okay, just talking to strangers or your camel. Um, have, they always say to have people ask you questions, like practice interviews, but it's better to have random people you don't know. Because even if your mom asking you questions makes you nervous and you feel like it's good practice, the person interviewing you is most likely going to be a complete stranger, so practice with a complete stranger. It's going to be my best tip for interview. Ah, evening gown is my favorite. You would think it would be talent, but I got too nervous most of the time. I was going to say it's like science. What is it called? I don't know, like, we have a plethora of information on the internet that I didn't have when I first started doing pageants, so I couldn't learn, and I didn't get any training, so I didn't know, like, if you have yellow undertones, these colors look better with your skin tone, right? So things like that, like, figure out your skin tone, undertones, and all of that stuff, and then I would say choose a dress that matches your skin tones the best because sometimes with those bright lights on stage you can look really flushed out, you can look dry, you can look like a ghost, you can look scary, right? You might not look flushed out and be ghostly but you'll look like whoa, you'll be too bright. So always go with something that is flattering for your body type and your skin tone and I love wearing my hair up. I think hair up often looks better than hair down simply because if your dress has, you know, sleeves or patterns or anything up here, 
I feel like if you're wearing your hair down, you're covering your dress. So instead of covering portions of your dress, have it open so they can see your whole dress. Like you did not buy that expensive dress so it could be hidden. Or did you? What makes you comfortable and what makes you happy too? You can really just be like, yes, I have a rectangular body and this shape of dress might be the most flattering, but it's also the most uncomfortable, so I'm not wearing it, okay? And you can still look good in dresses that aren't necessarily traditionally flattering for your body type. Choose a talent that it's gonna be hard to stand out, I'm just saying. <laughs> Because a lot of people, a lot of people sing, a lot of people dance, a lot of people, I was going to say paint fast on stage, draw fast. I haven't actually ever seen that, but I see that like on talent, America's Got Talent, and things like that. Um, like I'm saying, excuse me, <laughs> like I said, I am retired, so I don't know what the girls are doing nowadays. I mean, there's a, like a plethora of different forms of dancing that you can do. Same with music, those styles. Um, a girl did a monologue. She did like an acting piece. I think someone did do spoken word. So there's multiple different kinds of talents that you can have. You can do like gymnastics. I say though, if you're struggling to find a talent, choose something that is unique and something that you actually do but make it fun i say if you are struggling always be funny just try to be funny because everybody can connect with humor some people might not be able to connect with your hobby that you're trying to make into a talent but they can connect with humor so in these final seconds i will show you these things because I have so many dusty just boxes of pageant stuff. I'm telling you, when I said I was retired, I meant it. If you need more tips, this video is short. So if you want more tips, let me know. I can make a longer video.